Hey everyone, it's Ujwal. So great to see you. Today, we're gonna talk about a killer car strategy so that you can ace the car section of the MCAT. Let's get started. Hey guys, it is Ujwal. Today, we're gonna talk about the dreaded section, cars. Cars was my worst section. Um, I was never really good with reading comprehension. So I knew that coming in to the MCAT, I'm gonna need to spend a lot of time preparing for the car section. But the problem was all these review books and resources never really told me what I could do to do better in cars. They just said practice, 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 but that clearly didn't work because my score was not improving. So I had to figure out a way to tackle cars. And that's where I came up with a strategy. After countless hours and weeks of my score not improving, getting questions wrong, question after question on the passages, I realized that I need to come up with my own way of tackling cars because no review book out there was gonna give me the answer. And so I came up with a strategy and that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today. So this video is gonna be divided into three sections. First, we're gonna talk about dispelling a very common misconception about the cars section. Before we jump into cars, we need to understand that cars is not as impossible as the test makers and our peers make it out to be. It's a lot more simple once we really understand what it is testing. Second, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the actual strategy itself. And then finally, I'm gonna give you guys some tips on things to avoid and things to make sure you keep an eye out for because those were things that definitely made a difference during my preparation. So there's gonna be timestamps down in the description below if you'd like to skip around, so please feel free if you wanna just jump down to the strategy. But first, we're gonna talk about dispelling the most common misconception people have about cars. So let's jump right into it. All right, guys, so let's jump into the first misconception that we need to dispel about cars. But before we do that, let's talk about the major problem that students face with cars, and that is balancing time and comprehension. A lot of students, myself included, think that there is no way that you can have one without compromising the other. If you wanna have enough time to answer all the questions and go through all the passages, you need to sacrifice comprehension because you're gonna be skimming through. But if you wanna make sure that you understand the passages really well, you're gonna be going so slow such that you will run out of time at the end. So this is what a lot of students think. But the solution is to strike a balance between the two, using an effective strategy for cars. So what is this misconception though that a lot of students believe to be true? They think cars is a lot more subjective than it actually is. They think you can't prepare for cars. You never know what's gonna show up. There's nothing you can really do to control your score and performance in that section. And that's not true. Cars is a very objective section. And that's the first thing we need to get through our heads. Cars passages are very similar to the standard essay formats that we've been taught in school. The standard intro, body paragraphs and conclusion with a thesis somewhere in the intro, the format, the structure, it is all the same. So it's our job to go ahead and dissect the passages, put all the relevant information into a nice mental map and use that information to answer the questions as quickly and accurately as possible. And so that's where the strategy jumps in. And so without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, so the strategy involves the following. First things first, you start out with your intro paragraph. You need to make sure that you read the intro paragraph very attentively. It's gonna be very important because it's going to present the author's main idea, the whole topic that this passage is going to be focused on. Using that, you can now lay the foundation for what the main idea of the entire passage is, and that's gonna help guide your answers to the questions. Somewhere in the first paragraph, you may also encounter a thesis. Now, the thesis may not be presented in a standard argumentative fashion right at the end of the first paragraph as you're used to, but it's gonna be somewhere in there. And so it's our jobs to read the entire first paragraph carefully and looking out for that thesis, the author's main argument slash point. All right, so now we have read the first paragraph. What do we do from there? Well, we stop and jump to the questions. Usually the questions are presented in chronological order. So that means that if there's a question that will be specifically asking about the first paragraph, that's gonna be the first question to show up in your series of questions. 
So after reading the first paragraph, if you jump to the questions and you can answer the first one, there you go, you just knocked out an entire question. You don't need to come back to that question later on, which would usually require you to jump back to the first paragraph to take a quick skim to see what the answer is. We're avoiding that whole process that could potentially waste a lot of time and in the process, also getting more questions right. All right, so you jump to the questions, you answer the first question, and then you can move on to the second to see if, hey, maybe the second question is also asking about information presented in the first paragraph. Usually that won't be the case. And other times the questions may not be specific with regards to what they want from the passage, but they may be a main idea question. If that's the case, you flag that question and then you come back to answer it after you have read the entire passage because the conclusion paragraph will help tie the main idea together. All right, so we have now jumped to the questions. We've answered as many as we can, flagged the ones we couldn't. Now we can jump to the body paragraphs. What do we do when we read the body paragraphs? Well, first of all, it's not gonna be easy to maintain focus and attention as you're going through nine of these passages. The test takers also know that. Your job is to make sure that you highlight and focus on the key pieces of information. And so in the body paragraphs, that means focusing on transitional keywords, like however, therefore, more so, in addition to, that help indicate the direction of the author's argument and then you focus on the first sentence of each body paragraph because that's where most of the information you need to know will be located. So once we're done with that, after each paragraph, we do the same process we did before. We jump into the questions and we answer as many as we can, flagging the ones we can't, and we make our way down to the conclusion paragraph where we need to focus and pay attention once again. This paragraph will be very important because it's gonna tie the entire main idea together for us. And that's gonna help us answer those flagged main idea questions from earlier. Now, by the time you've gone through the entire passage, you will have gone through all of the questions, flagged the ones you couldn't answer, and answer a good chunk of them. So that means that you have now saved yourself a whole lot of time. And since you've been focusing on the main idea and the relevant pieces of information, you will now be able to better answer those main idea questions. And that is it for the strategy. With practice, the strategy will help you go through passages a lot more quickly with a greater accuracy. But the key word here is practice. All right, so that's it for the strategy. Now let's jump in and talk about the last key points that we need to keep in mind as we're going through the car section. A lot of students make a myriad of mistakes as they go through the car section. I did a lot of these things myself in the beginning, but later on, once I realized how ineffective they can be and how low yield these strategies were, I discarded them. And those are what I'm gonna share with you guys here today. First, don't highlight or write things down as you're going through a passage. Research has shown that highlighting and writing things down are very ineffective strategies when it comes to going through passages. It makes you think that you're focusing on important pieces of information and you're noting down important points, but in reality, it's just distracting you from the flow of going through the passage. And it's also making you feel like you're being effective when in fact, you're really not. The goal is to answer questions. And when you're highlighting and writing things down, you're taking away time from actually doing that. So my recommendation is to ensure that you don't highlight things on your passages and you don't write things down. The second piece of advice that I have for you guys is to make sure you really practice the strategy. I know that a lot of students come into the car section thinking that there's not much that they can do, but in this video, we've given you something that you can do. You have an actual strategy that you can apply and see whether it works for you. Now, practice is very important because right off the bat, the strategy won't be that easy. It's not easy to focus on the key points in the first paragraph, the first sentence of all of the body paragraphs, and making sure you're looking out for the key transitional words. That doesn't come naturally, for most of us at least. So that means you need to put in the time to actually practice the strategy and see whether you're able to improve your car score over time. And my last point is make sure that you modify the strategy as you see fit. This strategy was devised from me going through a lot of review books, pulling out pieces of information that I found very effective and helpful and discarding the parts that weren't really that helpful for me. And so that's where the strategy has actually come from. And you should be doing the same thing. I know I said, don't highlight, don't write things down. And I told you to answer questions after each paragraph. But if any of these tips don't really resonate with you, don't really help you work effectively, then by all means, change it, discard it. Don't worry about it. 
Focus on the high yield strategies that work for you and modify any part of the strategy as you see fit. All right, everyone. So that is it for this episode. I hope that was very helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you liked the video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in that next one. Take care.